praising the King Hail Selassie. I, Ja Rastafar, I, from the State College, see classes are in session. Anyone that's interested in this lesson, please gather around. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Today we are discussing the Taliban. The Taliban is a government. It might not be the government of the oppressor, yet it is a government. And as the story goes, the Taliban has been classified a terrorist organization by many so-called governments around the world. And why is that? Well, after 9-11, uh, the United States military was paid to go and attack the land of Afghanistan. The events on 9-11 served as a pretext. That is a reason for a reason that's not the real reason, as evident that they went into Afghanistan. Much of this was covered up by the war in Iraq, which took the spotlight because the villain became Saddam Hussein. The Taliban official title, from my recollection, is the Afghanistan Islamic Emirate. They conduct their affairs in a religious order. In other words, they abide by religious law. The two main, two main forms of law being civil and religious or religion. In the United States, the civil law is followed. This is derived from the Roman rule, which is a form of paganism. It is the most efficient way to cause people to become servants. And today it is often called democracy. It derives its power from people. However, as we've observed, some people have more power than others. A religious law is unmovable. The laws are set in stone, so to speak. Uh, so that unlike this civil law which changes according to man's desire, uh, similar to playing a game of Monopoly where somebody makes the rules up as they go along, you could assume who the winner will be. The religious law is different. It follows a strict adherence to principles, guidelines set forth by those forefathers that are deemed as worthy. This religious law is a threat to those that seek to enforce and impose their rule over others throughout the earth. You know, some of these folks are speculators. They trade in commodities. They have become wealthy 
from fossil fuels and rare minerals, those products of the earth. Afghanistan having one trillion dollars, according to United States scientists, in rare earth minerals underneath the surface, which is in more demand today than ever because of the smartphone. Now, most people would know what they know about the Taliban from watching the screen. It is hard to find a source on that screen that is not based on capital. So if you're interested in business, if you go to school here for business, you may be interested in knowing that there is one trillion dollars in rare earth minerals in Afghanistan that Apple has the cash to pay for because the Federal Reserve loans to Apple directly. So if you would like to become wealthy, you could hire the United States military to go in and eliminate these people. And then you can steal those resources. Well, it wouldn't be stealing underneath the monopoly law. And then you could pay the media, which is your news organization communication channels, to publicize your story and you would become a hero in this country for having eliminated this group of cave dwellers and mud hut people is what sometimes they're referred to by the supremacists. The one thing that is worthy to note is that the Taliban has never attacked the United States. They've remained within their country and only defended their land. If the Taliban were to come into the United States without the United States permission and begin extracting resources, water from the Rocky Mountains, oil from Texas, you know, natural gas from a shale in North Dakota. And, and, and shipping that, those commodities to Afghanistan, uh, that would be considered unlawful underneath this civil law. However, underneath the civil law, it is acceptable for others to go to Afghanistan and take those resources for themselves. Uh, these people that rule under civil law have obtained so much wealth and they are afraid of losing. This is why when you come to these colleges and universities, you pay them to train you to work for them. Unless perhaps maybe you're in an Ivy League school. In that case, you're being groomed for a management position. But most of us are being sold on this idea that this civil rule equates to freedom. And as evident, it is free for some, for some. Uh, but when we factor in this concept they call democracy, it would imply that it must include freedom for all, for all. Also to note about this group, the various efforts of propaganda. When the 9-11 happened, the Fox News organization began to paint their 
portrayal of the situation. And we were shown these depictions of these men and they were supposed to be saying something. It must be remembered that these news organizations have no obligation to tell truth. The only benefit they have is to gain and contain supporters, followers, and audience. If they think that they're losing their support, they will take a step in another direction and perhaps begin to tell truth. But it is within the language that they use that they're able to tell, in the words of Frederick Douglass, a half a lie or a half a truth. And so it is a one side argument. One side is called bias. The old saying, there's always two sides to the story. And some say the truth is in the middle. When we hear about these suicide bombings, what are we hearing about? If we had ventured to go to the Taliban website, perhaps 10 years ago, we would learn that this is strictly prohibited, strictly prohibited in this organization. It was seen as unclean. Halal, I believe is the word. And recently, in the past few years, we've been hearing about these suicide bombings. Now, it has been witnessed that there are equipment available to conduct bombings remotely using drones that disintegrate and so the investigation is concluded as a suicide bombing. Again, this is in an effort to paint a portrayal of this organization. Quite frankly, this group can't exist in the future according to the rulers of the civil law because they have some plans in place in which this group would reject. You have these billionaires, the Tesla satellite people that are building these microchips you see the step being taken in this direction. These people are conformed because they grow, they are brought into a world where they're told that you need this device. You need this device. And the makers of these microchips are saying, you need the microchip to keep up with the artificial intelligence. This is unnatural. And groups like this wouldn't stand for it. It would be opposed to their religious order, just as it is with Christ's people. Opposed. This is why religious law is such a threat to man, because man loses power when religious law is implemented. The most powerful military in the world is what the United States is called. And yet, they have been ineffective at defeating what they call mud hut people. because the Taliban conducts what can be referred to as guerrilla warfare. Their 
mountain dwellers. So they know how to use that natural terrain to their advantage. Now, the United States says they want to have talks because it's an embarrassment and it's being conducted right around the corner in Tampa from the Air Force Base in McDill. Although many people in this area would be afraid to speak about these issues. Well, what are they afraid of when they profess that they live in the most greatest nation in the world that's protected by the Constitution that upheld the First Amendment to freedom of speech? Well, I tell you, there is no freedom where there is fear. Perfect love is without fear. And so freedom is perfect love. And perfect love is not pornography. So the effort is there to confuse the minds to thinking they know what it's like to be free. To be free. Have you ever been in a jail cell? If you have, there may be some things that you desired that you were unable to obtain. One of which is sunlight. Another is fresh air. A third is fresh water. Sometimes just water. These are the gift of the Creator that man destroys in favor of his rule. He calls freedom. He's got plenty of fresh air. He's got plenty of fresh water. He's got sunlight when he chooses. And yet, others don't. He calls it freedom. He's convinced others it's freedom too. They're looking at the screen. They see some models. They look like they're living the lifestyle. It's fun, exciting. So people follow them. They're being incentivized in their mind to walk in a direction. And when they get there, they'll have to make another decision. A man will send them off religious law keeps people grounded there is no child pornography there is no president under religious law that's bragging about grabbing women by their vagina Islamic rule was even protected by His Majesty, our Lord, the Christ, as He set aside specific ordinances for those that chose to follow. What if the Taliban existed and ruled the way they choose? How would that affect us? It wouldn't. But it would affect those rulers that seek those resources and those populations. They seek those populations 
as a form of debauchery. When you look at the internet, you can go into the public library and do a simple search. It could be just a basic word. And you might see depictions of Islamic women dressed in the hijab. in sexually suggestive positions and maybe some nudity right here right here because they are provoking war with those that uphold a religious order it's a provocation of the highest kind. It's not illegal underneath the civil law. Underneath the civil law, there's the dark net. Now, if we see what we could see on the regular internet, what is on this dark net? You know, children are being bribed. People are taking pictures of them, doing things sexually, and then they're being bribed. If you don't, if you say something, I'm going to put this out, and it's already put out. So they can get more. This wouldn't happen underneath religious law unless people were willing to die. But here, in the civil law, Who's getting penalized? Who's getting penalized? Or is it encouraged? And why is it encouraged? Provocation. These folks that rule are looking for war. They've been violent, folks. The African slave trade did not happen without force. If you Follow the money, like all the smart folks say, follow the money. Well, besides being caught up in lawyers and trusts and corporations, if you trace further enough back, you'll find out that the English and others in the European regions benefited. They benefited from the African slave trade. And just because they happened to abolish slavery in their country, before it was abolished in those countries that they were beneficiaries of, it doesn't mean that they gave it all back. They didn't give it back. They held it and they got more. And then they used that to dangle in your face so that you'll pay them to work for them. And that's what you could consider a beast force, especially when this is reality, no more evident today than before, and yet people are in fear of speaking of these truths right in front of their eyes. It's because they're caught up. They're caught up because these rulers, the world classes, are producing that content to keep people engaged, to believe in their concept that they are benefiting from. And the earth is at the brink of demise, along with all life now. But don't wait for the world classes to tell you this. That's why when you turn on the television, and you see these programming, whether it be a sitcom, something on HBO. Or most of the time, people are smiling. They're laughing. Even if it's a serious matter, people will find a way to make a joke. Because they don't want you to be aware. Once people become aware, aware of the situation, the seriousness... They begin to congregate to form a coalition to come up against this 
wrong. And that is what is needed in this land. A group of brave souls that are willing to conduct their own affairs by way of a righteous government. Those that choose to live underneath unrighteous order, which is none other than anarchy, may find another place. Maybe the desert in Nevada. They can go to Las Vegas on the weekend. But this earth is too precious to let these few greedy, self-conceited, egotistic barbarians rule. When you look at what you're being shown on that internet, when you see those behaviors, you know this is a product of the world class. That's the lifestyle they live and they seek for you to live because they measure themselves against themselves and they look to judge themselves against you to find any fault they can within you to rationalize their own behaviors. Innocent groups such as the Taliban are a threat to the world class rule. That is why they are labeled dangerous. Never attacked. Couldn't back it up with facts. But the propaganda speaks for itself. I have no association with the Taliban or any Islamic groups as I am a disciple of the Christ. And yet, let that not make me one-sided. Let's look at the entirety and make an adequate decision. This group has been, in recent days, split. They operate in Pakistan as well. And they are now being labeled within that region as good and bad because the intelligence agencies work to infiltrate organizations. Here in the United States is the homeland security because the CIA is not supposed to work domestically. But groups like the CIA and the MI6 will infiltrate these organizations and they will split them as they do with the populations of the rest of the earth. When they get together in their annual secret meetings, they're determining how to best divide the populations because if the populations are united, then what step will they take from there? What will they unite against? We all have to have purpose. And with that purpose, sometimes comes the adversary. That we have a need for a challenge. And so, as we unite, as if people united within prison, they would become opposed to the guards, not each other. And that becomes a threat to the guardians of Caesar's rule. Caesar, having ordered the crucifixion of the Messiah, and after this having been done, 
Where did Caesar go? Where is Caesar's rule? This concludes the lesson for today. Thank you. All praise the king.